Hello everyone, how are you going? And welcome back to Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. This is episode 6. Last time we took on both Monsoon and Sundowner. Uh, and then if you want to count it, we also versed Mistral and Monsoon yet again. Uh, thrown into the mix there. Uh, Monsoon brought Jack the Ripper back in that cutscene. So, so insane to see that. Um, and to see Jack's, Jack's coming back, baby. And then also Sundowner with his cheap tricks, with his explosive shield that taught us a thing or two about blade mode, that's for sure. Um, and it took me until this point to actually learn that when you're in the slow-mo and blade mode, when you use the thumbstick, you can actually um, choose the direction of the blade. Um, when you play a fast-paced game like this and then you're forced to then slow down, your brain then having to go, all right, let's take it slow now, is a, is a bit of an adjustment, but you can actually very much pinpoint those those slices so that, that boss fight can be so much smoother. Uh, but regardless, we managed to figure it out in the end. We cut all the arms off, we cut Sundown into little tiny pieces, um, and we're now looking for a way to get to, uh, we're now looking for a way to get to this, uh, to rescue the president, to save the president, I believe. Uh, we need to do that uh, in under three hours. So apparently there's a vehicle, there's something that we can get that will get us there in under 30 minutes. So that's what we're going to be moving into now. I believe this is chapter R05. So we're going to push forward now. Um, we'll see how we go in terms of um, the game's speed, if we've got any frame rate issues, because I'm obviously resuming the game at the end of a chapter where we left off. If I have any issues, I'll probably just have to restart the game. But let's jump in. Custom Cyborg Body, Desperado version unlocked. And Bloodlust Pincer Blades. Hell yeah. Cool. So let me just... Have a look, because it should give us the opportunity to customize Raiden's body. So, new BP. Let's have a look at this Desperado. Ooh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, right, red version. Cyborg frame patterned in the style of Desperado Enforcement Contractors. The performances of this frame are identical to those of the normal cyborg body. It's just a visual thing. It's just a visual thing. Love that. All right, um... I'll probably not end up buying the Grey Fox Blade for a long, long while. It costs 200,000 BP just to buy the goddamn thing. <laughs> but I assume it would probably be worth it. They'd make it worth your time. Um, we're going to cash in on these sword upgrades. Before I get strength plus four, I'll have a look at everything else, because we've got pincer blades, a pair of giant high-frequency machetes that can be combined to form massive shears, difficulty to follow, to follow in motion. Uh, they are particularly effective at catching their prey off guard, developed after careful analysis of Sundowner's battle data. I love that you can get, you can actually use the boss's uh, weapons. I actually think that's so damn cool. Ooh, you can just keep putting it into strength. I'm going to get two strength upgrades. And we're going to keep using the pole arm for now, because I actually love it. But um, I'm definitely going to experiment with other with other weapons. But opens up so many more opportunities, because obviously that, that way you get, um, you get more uh, moves to do, more like combat abilities uh, in the skills and stuff. It's, it's, actually, it's actually so cool. Um, Plant the weapon in the ground and use it as a pole to perform a spin attack. Um, balance string high speed movement to put rapid series of damaging attacks. Twist freely in the air and dive down like a lightning bolt. Um, I might get falling lightning. Save the other two. Um, and then. We, we get a we get a decent amount of BP each time, so I'm fine with like draining it each time, and then after we finish another mission, just getting straight into it. Exit customize screen. Let's move into chapter five. Cargo set to go, sir. Let's go, Doctor. Commencing takeoff in semi-auto mode. This 
kind of space launch once required days of preparation. Solus has been conducting test flights almost every day for the last six months. As long as we're not breaking atmosphere, they said they can reroute today's flight no problem. Amazing! Wow. Earth is the cradle of humanity, but mankind cannot stay in the cradle forever. <laughs> we do in space! As far as the thermosphere, this thing can't pass the Carmen line. We're getting in a spaceship, but we're not going to space yet. And here I was hoping you might bring me back a monolith. When can we do Metal Gear in space? Two bogies closing fast! Two bogies! The flight pattern suggests unmanned enemy. They could literally call it Metal Gear Space. Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Space. It just works. Shit. This is a transport chopper. Our defensive options are limited. Well, you better hurry up and think of something. Come on, Doctor. Ooh. Strong enough to take out the drone. Here they come. I'll handle this. Raiden. Raiden. <laughs> and people say Germans aren't funny. Let's go. Bring the chopper around. Did he just hack it? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh my god. Fuck, dude. Okay, I'm coming back. This is easier said than done, you know. Do not get chopped up by the blades, boy. Oh my god! <gasps> Holy shit! Oh! Oh! Don't do it. No! The heroic music stopped! <laughs> Ryden, if only you had jetpack boots! For a cyborg, you need jetpack boots, man! Friend. Oh no! Your sacrifice will not be forgotten. Raiden just like left behind, just like that. Oh. Quite the fall, Raiden. I'm glad to see that you are all right. It's time you got out of there. I love that I can still get seen. Does this look faster to you guys? I think it might. I think we activated turbo mode again. I'll fix it after this.
This music is so good. I love this move. How good is this? Where are you? <laughs> Where did he go? <laughs> there you are. <laughs> like, where'd he go? Give me that thing back. Cool. Lovely. I think I think it's a bit faster than it needs to be. Look how fast it look how fast he's going. Right. Are you all right? I can handle this. You just get those brains out of here. And what will you do? Get out of here and to the launch site. Ah, the young ladies' company, yeah? How fortunate they are in Colorado too. Yeah. Shouldn't take more than two hours with a set of wheels. Guess I'll just have to borrow some. A lot of cars got abandoned when the evac order came down. But won't the roads be blocked? If you are struck by one of those missiles, or... I know. Let me just worry about putting some distance between me and World Marshal, and what's left of it. So, we've got like less than three hours to go, and then Raiden's just like, oh yeah, I should be able to get there in just about two hours, and then they're gonna get in this space, the spaceship, which will shoot them across in about 30 minutes, but... That's still very close for time. Um, regardless, um, I think we're in, we're running in a bit of a turbo mode. I'm just going to quickly restart it so I can fix the, fix the speed. But that cutscene was insane. It's basically like, I can just imagine that there's a kid sat there playing with his toys, his little ninja toy and his helicopters, and he's just putting this crazy scenario in his head. And that is this game. It is playing with your, your cyborg ninja action figures. Uh, and seeing what kind of fucked up shit you can do with it. It's just like absolutely incredible. Yeah, you just slice through. Just slice through that drone. Like, no worries at all. <laughs> all right, let me quickly fix this speed thing, and then we'll get back into the action. All right, we are back. And attacking at a normal speed. So uh, we're now going to listen to the codec at the beginning of the chapter. It's story time as we uh, get what everyone has to say. Apparently it's a race against time and we're on the clock, but do you know what that means? It means time to pull out the codec and listen to what our lovely friends have to say. Roger. Are you? I'm fine. I'm a cyborg, remember? It'll take a bigger fall than that to phase me. Have you reached her yet? No. Most likely she's busy, duh? Nose deep in some book, not paying attention? Yep. Sounds about right. We will find her. I'm sure she will be on the campus somewhere. I already sent advance word to her office. Saying we have a big action hero with urgent business. <laughs> That'll get her attention. Think we can pull this off without her? If we have to? No. Not on short notice. She's the only one with authority who I can imagine would agree to this. All right. Fingers crossed, I guess. I didn't realize she was that high up, though. She was lead developer on this craft. All the way from concept stage. She could not make it alone, of course. But she is the one who put all the parts together, so to speak. Sounds like she's picked up some leadership skills. Glad to hear it. Project surely has separate management staff watching over it, yes, but... They are not leaders. She negotiates, settles arguments between specialists working for her. Very important. Also, she has vision. She can share that vision with other people. Make them see it, too. That is what makes Project successful. I bet. You can't get serious about something unless the whole team believes. Duh. Certainly she has natural leadership ability. A gifted child in so many ways. Sunny. The Patriots may have uh, something to do with Sunny? It. I'd say so. What do you think? Should we see if she wants to come on board? What? No, no. Right. One leader is enough for this company. This whole time, I was like, they're not naming this person. It's got to be a reveal. They're not naming this person at all. And it's it has to be some fo like some sort of reveal. There's no way that they're just like... Because they talk about people so casually and mention names. I'm like, oh, they're alluding to, alluding to someone. And I was like, my first thought was Sunny. And I was like, but they're talking about people that are building a spacecraft. I'm like, eh, well, maybe. And then as soon as I got the line, it was a gifted child. I'm like, this is Sunny. I mean, it's after Metal Gear Solid 4. It's gotta be. 
Get back the way you came for now. It's gotta be. You all right, buddy? That was one hell of a drop. Yeah, I'm good. This body's even tougher than I realized. <laughs> that was some in-flight entertainment. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Sliders or hammerheads are one thing, but the MQ-320 is a full-fledged warplane. Only the USAF's supposed to have them. Someone should tell World Marshal that. UAV tech's grown a lot, but not that much. Fully equipped battle planes would cost a fortune. Everything in them is cutting edge tech. The military might let a PMC operate one, but I can't think of many who could bankroll one for themselves. Yeah, can't see the US being keen on sharing its toys, especially with World Marshal. The military might have loaned it out, but only for overseas ops in major hotspots. They wouldn't outsource the defense of American airspace. That's their job. Imagine the headlines. Any warplane within U.S. airspace, manned or not, it's military or nothing. That's part of the reason private UAV tech hasn't advanced as much as it could have. If I had to guess, they were probably trainers from Peterson Air Force Base. And if World Marshals got access to equipment like that... Yeah. Either the Army gave them permission, or they somehow scrambled without using military channels. Either way, they're in deeper with the military than we thought. I know I just leveled World Marshal HQ, but I don't understand why the military would get involved. I'm not an enemy combatant or anything. I can see why the police would want me, but the Air Force? Well, you did kind of kill a bunch of police officers. Now, I know they were more World Marshal security guards than anything else, but they still had badges. And when the police can't catch you, that's when they call in the guard. This is blowing up pretty quickly. Pretty much full-on warfare, yeah. Asymmetric warfare, that is. Well, we better wrap this up quick, then. Any more warplanes, and I could be in trouble. I doubt Peterson's got any more MQs ready to go. You'd have seen him by now. My hunch is, someone at World Marshal probably panicked and had it dispatched after Sundowner died. There won't be another sortie. Once you're out of Denver, things won't seem so urgent for them anymore. The military can't just go around willy-nilly shooting down civilian helicopters. Maybe. But if we're dealing with guys who can commandeer U.S. military planes without Army approval... Well, then we'd really be screwed. But I doubt it's that easy for them. <laughs> Damn! Two fighter planes downed? Pretty impressive, Raiden. Even for you. It's not me, really. It's this body. Well, sure, it's this helps, body. But it would be nothing without your tactics and reactions. Maybe. I wouldn't even dare take them on if I wasn't in this frame, though. <laughs> You never could take a compliment. But I admit, the tech is pretty hot. Makes you wonder what'll happen once cyborgs become more common. It'd mess with sports, that's for sure. I doubt we'll get to that point. A lot of groups have already... How is it not at that point already? Cyborg athletes. I guess so. That haven't, well, you know, they're not gonna let them on the field. Well, sure. But what happens once folks get used to seeing cyborgs perform all these superhuman feats? It's surprising to me. folks, the regular stuff just wouldn't cut it after that. In fact, I bet they'd welcome you guys in stuff like extreme sports. Cyborg Olympics. Half the contest. You see that video with the cyborg skater? It's got like a hundred million hits. Novelty, Kev. Nothing more. What excites people is seeing regular folks doing superhuman things. If there's no training, no sacrifice beyond I paid for the operation, that'll get real old real quick. Well, it's more than just the operation, though. You need brains to drive that body, right? A lot of people just like to see the limits of how far the human body can be pushed. I bet plenty would want to see just how far cyborgs can go, too. Like, a cyborg pro wrestling league could be pretty interesting, or, or you know, football. I guess it could happen. Maybe then you'd consider getting enhanced. With enough cash, you could jump right into the top ranks of any cyborg sport. It'd be nice, but I've always sucked at sports. There's no way, unless I swap out my brain, too. <laughs> nah. I'm content just watching from the sidelines. Where'd you get the EMP, Doc? Oh, that! Well, I had no intention of dogfighting in a transport helicopter. But I didn't feel comfortable flying without some modicum of protection. Well, I'm glad you planned ahead. Missiles these days use thermographic cameras. Flares rarely work. EMP is not completely foolproof, though. Most recent cyborgs, and even many UGs, are equipped with EMP countermeasures. Why not just put EMP countermeasures in missiles as well, then? Well, it is possible, but EMP-based missile defense is a relatively recent invention and still not common. 
This generator is a product of my own laboratory. It will be some time before missile technology catches up. You never cease to amaze me, Doc. No? Shall I add super genius to my business card upon my return? <laughs> Trust me, you deserve it. Stay sharp, though. The skies may not stay friendly for long. Yes, of course. Of course. Everything still okay up there? Smooth um, sailing. No bogies. Denver, some distance behind. It appears those UAVs were our only pursuers. Yeah, but whoever launched them still out there. World Marshal's tapping its army contacts to try and get us. Only the military could launch a UAV in U.S. airspace. But it looks like their clout's run out for now. Indeed. And now that your little skirmish at the HQ is over, well, it simply wouldn't do for the army to fire at a civilian helicopter. I would imagine there is quite the argument unfolding between the Americans and World Marshal right now. No doubt some toes were stepped on getting those UAVs up. Probably. But a sundowner's telling the truth. Operation Tecumseh still underway. And the president's got a big old bullseye on his head. And most likely, that's what they're focused on for now. Indeed, we are not blessed with an abundance of time. And I'd prefer to avoid any additional air combat. AI makes piloting these things considerably easier than before, but one moment's carelessness and poof! Can't you switch out with another pilot? We've no licensed pilots on hand. And for this task, at least, I find it difficult to trust anyone but myself. Of course, I would not have taken this route had I known this would happen. Ah, I was far too careless. Too preoccupied with all the things I could do with these brains. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Still glad you're here, though. I wouldn't have a clue how to get the brains out of that system. Without you, I could have killed them all. Oh, yes. I will be collecting more than a few favors after this. There are several experiments I'd still like to conduct on your body. Uh, let's <laughs> talk about that later, Doc. Everything still okay up there? Smooth. It yeah, only the but it looks indeed. I would probably and the indeed. I can't we've no of course. Ah, <laughs> I wouldn't. Oh, yeah. there are, uh, are you injured, Ryden? Actually, no. This body's something else. <laughs> Bad. I can't get back to the chopper though. Yes, it is too dangerous for us to approach you. Your pursuers are equipped with anti-air missiles. Yeah, time to get the hell out of Denver. I'll commandeer a car or something. You will go to the Solus launch facility, and then to Pakistan. That's the plan. Shouldn't be too hard, assuming I can shake these cops. Even World Marshal can't sick an entire battalion on me. Not in time, anyway. Please confirm your motives. Why do you wish to save the President? It's not like I'm his number one fan, but if I don't, it'll reignite the war on terror all over again. And that means more blood money to fatten their bottom line. You heard what Sundowner said. Maybe the brains are safe, but if I don't do something... Raiden, allow me to join you. You sure <laughs> you want that? This could get rough. Yes, I understand it will be a difficult mission. All the more reason for me to assist you. Well, I could use the help. I will find a way to exit the helicopter. Proceed out of the city. I will contact you when I am on the ground. Copy that. See you on the ground. Oh. Know anyone named Kubayama? Kubayama? No. Perhaps I have heard it before, but... Huh. Well, no big deal. Just thought it might ring a bell. I apologize that I am unable to help. Nah, forget it. Unless I am mistaken. Yama is Japanese for mountain. Huh? Does that help? No. The colonel told me he met Gubayama once. Probably someone's name. A significant number of sumo wrestlers use the term Yama as part of their ring name. Perhaps this Gubayama is in the sumo business? Makes sense, sure. I just wish there was some way of knowing what that AI was trying to tell me. Don't suppose you know where Shibomniji is either, huh? No, Raiden. I don't. Wolf, you're no help. Hey, Wolf. No one in Cuba. Huh. I have nah. Huh? Does the no. I see perhaps. Mix. I just don't suppose. No. Alright. Then Courtney lost, so we save. So, uh, you want to fill me in on your plans for later? My plans for later? <laughs> Are you making dinner reservations? <laughs> well, there is this new sushi joint I've been meaning to check out. 
But, oh, right. I guess you're gonna be kind of busy over in Pakistan, aren't you? You certainly seem in a good mood, at least. Well, uh, can't be a proper action hero without a joke or two. Yeah, well, I wouldn't quit your day job. <laughs> Look, we've all got our coping mechanisms, I guess. Ask any soldier. A little levity can work wonders when you're facing death. Doesn't really matter if it's funny or not. If it helps you and your buddies relax, then it helps. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Sorry, I, I didn't mean anything by it. Forget about it. Okay, Forget I got a joke it. for you then. Three tomatoes are walking down the street, and they go... <laughs> I've heard this one, Courtney. And thanks for the thought, but I'll be fine. <sighs> All right. Well, anyway. So you're headed for Solus first? Yeah, Solus Space and Aeronautics. It's a private space outfit. Ever since NASA opened up spaceflight to commercial companies, it's become a pretty crowded market. And that's where Sunny works? You got yeah, it. they named her. Too far from here. They named her. Doing Air Force Space Command work for the Peterson Air Force Base nearby. Two years ago, though, they built their own spaceport and moved to their current location. Glad to hear they're close. Boris is getting in contact now. You just focus on getting out of Denver. Copy that. If you if you skip over the codec, which if you've skipped over the codec, which people have, and people have told me that they skipped out on the codec, there's so much that you miss. There's so much in here. It's such a fully fleshed out traditional codec, which is really interesting for going for like an action based like hack and slash. There's still a codec with so much useful information and it's and it's just peak Metal Gear. It's exactly what you'd expect. Um, but yeah, if you if you ignore the codec in, in this and don't talk to anybody, uh, I guess you would get the reveal of Sunny later. But it's interesting that the conversation between Boris and Raiden do not name Sunny at all, yet Courtney does, which is which is interesting. So it makes me wonder if that was like intentional or a slip up to like not reveal the character. Because that's what I was getting from Boris and Raiden's conversation is like, oh, they're building up a reveal of somebody. But Courtney just goes, that's where Sunny works, right? <laughs> So there you go. Looks like that's confirmation enough for me. Oh, you can stealth one. Hell yeah. You can stealth a gecko. Dead on, he says. Jump up. Oh god. Oh! Ah! I'm doing the parry motion, but like, funnily enough, there we go. Sometimes you still get hit. Bullseye! Bullseye! Oh, I didn't even clean off the sword. Didn't even complete a combat scenario. I guess there's another gecko around here. Never mind. You can do it, I believe in you. Ow. I wanna see... Okay, so we can see all the new things that you can do. It'd be what I would really appreciate is if um, this was like one of those videos on the side of the screen where I could actually see the um, see the attack in action. So LS up down and X like Thunderstrike. Let me have a look. 
Ooh. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, sky high. Okay. God, it's like a fighting game, dude. Fighting game is so funny. Defensive, offense, X and A. Ah, oh, cool. So, slice while putting yourself back. So I might get in the habit of doing that one. And then just press a bunch of Y buttons, you're fine. <laughs> Less than Y, all right, let's try this one. Okay. Oh! To have such a, such a complex understanding of the controls um, in a fast-paced game like this, you have to, you'd be an absolute madman. Very talented, though. <laughs> this is where you end up seeing those YouTube videos that's like what a thousand hours in Metal Gear Rising looks like, and it's a man who can just flawlessly execute every single com combination without, without issue. Alright, let's go. Let's get out of this area. We've been here for too long. But, I did take this opportunity to at least see about doing some abilities. So, I'll, I'll work on actually... Work on actually learning those. Alright, we're back in the main plaza again. Back here. Take control of my character again. There was one... I was trying to do that move. There we go. I was trying to do that move. Right, hurry. It may be an RLB, but it still needs time to accelerate and decelerate from first cosmic velocity. It could require more than 30 minutes to get to Pakistan. Well, at the rate that I'm going, I can't cancel this throw. I can't cancel the throw, Chief. Oh, there we go. We're fine. Nano paste back on. What I realized is when you're doing this move, if you just you don't have to even it doesn't matter which direction you put it in, as long as you like I can go double down X or double up X. Sometimes. Only when it only when it chooses to, apparently. There you go. Yeah. Cool. These guys are not really worth <laughs> my time of practicing my skills on. There you go, he's in the air. Come here. 
Give me some real targets. You're giving me these guys. Oh, the camera does me no favors sometimes. Combat system in this game is so fucking cool. Oh, <laughs> the fucking tripod in, who got in the way. <laughs> the tripod he got in the way is so funny. Oh, I was trying to slice through both, because I know you can, wait, when you throw it up, and I hadn't noticed that it goes right in the middle before, so I just think that's so cool. But I was trying to do a clean slice through both him and the other machine in one go. That's a shame. Next time, baby. The music can be so good, but also some strain. So strange sometimes. When it's like, it's so western right now. Oh, I'm being... Let me get rid of these dudes first, and then we'll take on Big Boy. Come on, you can die anytime, thank you. Alright, your turn, baby. side, please. Gotcha! The, press the right button. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Give me cardboard box, please. Do 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 do. He's got pretty terrible vision, so. It's so funny that there's still an option to do stealth in this game. Ah! I'm a cardboard box. You can't. It is 
fucking so hard to recover from being stunned and then actually fighting back instantly. Let me alone. <laughs> Stop. He just strolls out from the door. Uh -huh. Melons! Melons! Suddenly the watermelon in uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes makes sense. Ah! But melons! How dare you! Oh my god. Get off of me. Get off. I hate that gun attack. It's just, it ruins the flow, man. It ruins the flow. It ruins it! Why does it do, like, the red square for me to get and then just disappears? What are you even doing? This guy is a pain in the ass. God. The camera! Why does the camera exist just to make me suffer? Oh, what's the what is the point of even going for the square on the on the monkey dudes? Cause they don't even fucking work. Every time I try and slice them up, they're like, nah. What's the point? Hey yeah! Melons. That's what I was coming in here for, for a bit of Fruit Ninja. Fruit Ninja. You're that Fruit Ninja. But yes, now, uh, now Ground Zero's watermelon makes sense, is what I was trying to mention before I was ambushed. Because for some reason they... I, I, I never understood why. Snake, or Big Boss, uh, gave uh, Raiden a watermelon in the Jamais Vu mission. But it all makes sense now, because there's watermelons in this game. <laughs> and Revengeance came out first. God damn. I think those monkey... those monkey enemies are my least favorite. They just annoy me. Right. That should do nicely.
<laughs> I need your bike thank you for cooperation. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that was the end of that. That's okay. Interesting. That chapter did not include a boss and was actually uh, quite peaceful. The escape from Denver. Um, something that should have taken a minimal amount of time. Okay, that was barely even a chapter. The escape from Denver. It, it, that should have. Uh, that may as well have been just an epilogue, uh, or a continuation from chapter four. But there you go. Grab another fuel cell. And in my life. Everything's going to start getting a little bit more expensive, so I might just leave it at that. I leave it at that. Riding on a bike. Get it? He's riding on a bike. How to get to... How to get to... Sunny, quick smart. So dumb. Everything okay on your side? I am out of Colorado airspace and nothing on the radar. Good. I'm almost there. I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to go smoothly. I'm just waiting for something to go wrong. Why are we stopping, Raiden? Ooh, there we go. That's why we're stopping. What the hell? Oh, it's Blade Wolf. It's our boy. <gasps> it's... No! What? Like, having a little heart to heart? I have analyzed his words and actions. I am unable to ascertain his motivation. Uh, fancy meeting you here. Because he respects Sam, doesn't he? Come. I suppose I should thank you for not killing everyone at the launch site. <laughs> well, not if you say it like that. For a hired killer, you're not very good at your job. The war is the big payoff. Right. Big raises all around once World Marshal gets all those contracts. I'm not talking about money, Jack. I'm talking ideals. Memes. Me. <sighs> Forget it. We've both heard enough speeches about higher causes by now. History will decide who's right. End of story. Rematch time? I don't care who thinks I'm right. And I've got cause enough for killing you. Huh? Oh, good. <laughs> Why, that's very good. Yes, I like that. Must you really fight? Don't interfere. This is why we've got the Wild Wild West music. This is between us. Quick on the draw. Amazing. And it ends here. Okay. Let's dance! Oh, let's fucking go! I love the additional lore. I love the additional lore that we have on Sam's sword now, by the way. Because we were talking to, like, we are talking to our boys about it, and they were like, yeah, this is an actual samurai sword that went through, like, modification, which is, which is so cool. Alright, Sam boss fight for the beginning of the chapter. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. 
He's going to I'm Jack the Ripper. Yes, well, I hope so. Do not underestimate his attack speed. You must watch his moves. Bury them. Even if he blocks you, keep pushing. Break his guard and you will have chance to attack. He's a tough one. Yeah, he's... Go uh, do not even... Right. You gonna be okay? I'm fine, Kev. I wide open. I wide open. It's true. I know the joy of killing. I don't deny it anymore. I don't fear it anymore. All right. Let's just finish this. You're the master of his level. Projectile attacks are useless. Technology will not be the deciding factor here. This battle will be won by sheer force of will. Whoever breaks first, dies first. Then I can't lose. Can I talk to Wolf? Ryden, a World Marshal helicopter crashed in this vicinity earlier. It was en route to deliver a cache of cyborg repair materials. Should you locate any conspicuous crates, cut them open. See what is inside. You sure you want to stay on my side, Wolf? Sam's gonna die here, you know. I still owe you a debt. Wild. Be careful, Raiden. I know you're stronger now, but remember who you're dealing with here. How about a little less talk and more safe, <laughs> Courtney? Oh, uh, yeah. But I thought... Changed my mind. Out. Are you ready for this music and this boss fight? Let's go. It's over. <laughs> No! He's gonna fight me without a sword. Oh shit. <laughs> what do we do here? He's dodging everything quite well. There we go. Oh. Nice. Oh, the tumbleweed. <laughs> yeah. Cyborg Western Wild West fight on the highway. So wild.
Oh. I attacked him when his blade was yellow. Oh, I cut him when he was golden blading again. Oh, well, I mean, I was in the middle of getting up there, so what do you expect me to do? Jesus. was a fun fight. Great music too. Great music too. That was awesome. He is dead. He barely had any cyborg enhancements. Was this outcome necessary? Evidence inconclusive. I guess even AIs don't know everything. It is likely no single correct answer exists. Additionally, human conflict stems from opposing ideals and societal norms. I was not programmed with these guidelines. You're better off figuring those out for yourself. We got a cool blade, boy! Ah! Uh, Haha! <laughs> The efficacy of the enhancement directly correlates to the quality of the original weapon. ID My control! Indicates Sam inherited the sword from his father. I'm going to bury it? I will retain it in memory of Sam. ID control. Weapon control. Gun control. <laughs> So fucking badass, dude. While Snake was off sneaking, Raiden was studying the blade. Raiden, 
We have less than one hour. Hurry! Roger that. Sorry, I was wasting time cutting people open. <laughs> it's like, Rodden, hurry the fuck up! It's, you were, something bad's about to happen. <laughs> Okay, so these these chapters. Oh no, that's a combat result, not an end of a chapter. That was weird. Why not just make this fight the ending of the of the chapter we just did then? Oh no, it is the end of the chapter. So strange. They they like quick and easy on the chapter R five and six. They should have just made that one chapter, so there you still get a boss fight at the end of uh, of a chapter. Strange. Chapter file R6. Status closed. Super cool fight though, but yeah, we we've anal we like Raiden said, we've analyzed Sam now, so we're able to actually fight him properly. And uh and beat him, I guess. So there you go. Complete. Let's go. Solar Space and Aeronautics. <laughs> the poster on the wall. Oh, yep, and the magazine too. He's an otaku! Oh my god. <laughs> Are you, uh, Mr. Raiden, sir? <laughs> Bruh. This guy is not clever. Are you Mr. Raiden? It's just like one of my Japanese animes. Sunny! <laughs> oh wow. There, That's a. Hey. Th okay. You're looking good. Aw, who's your little friend? Oh, it's a long story. Shake? <laughs> She's growing up! She's growing up! No, Raiden. I am not loyal to you. Uh, I guess we don't really have time to catch up. <laughs> not really. It's okay. Follow me. Dude, so weird. <gasps> Do we get to see Otacon, dude? So exactly what kind of... You'll see. Does Otacon exist? Is he around? She's got all like this en like engineering gear. Yep. A spaceship to surpass Metal Gear. This is so good! Like, you, you, you forget, like, Sunny was so timid. It uses a hybrid lace ramjet engine I designed. Well, are you in a hurry or not? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Sunny was so timid Thanks. in... MGS4. <laughs> so strange. She's like, yeah, I just built this spaceship. Otacon taught you well. The flight plan is already set. You're good to go. Please switch off all cell phones and portable gaming devices. And remember, this is a no smoking flight. <laughs> Roger. Ready for countdown. No time for that. Huh. <laughs> Just go. And then probably, um... That's why Otacon was saying, it's okay for you to go outside now, Sonny. And Sonny's like, yep, I'm gonna go outside and build a spaceship. <laughs> Holy shit. Sonny's character development. Timid little girl to, yep. We're going, we're going into spaceship. Built it myself. Actually wholesome, though. Oh my god. 
<laughs> That's so funny, dude. Oh, I was wondering if there was going to be an Otacon there. If he's like watching over here. But it, I guess Otacon and Solid Snake have moved on with their lives. But we made it to Pakistan in time. There you go. This is absolutely incredible, dude. Well, anything? Nothing. You sure we got the right place? Gotta be. It's the only base big enough with security contracted out to World Marshal. All right. I'm headed in. I'm headed in. It's a shame we can't use um, Sam's blade. It's ID tagged. ID tag weapon. So there you go. Beginning of this chapter, RO7 is heading to the military base. But I think what we're going to do is, because we completed two chapters um, and had our great cutscene with Sunny, is I am going to bring the episode to a close here, and we will resume uh, this chapter next time. I think that fight with Sam was absolutely amazing, and then the following uh, cutscene was also incredible. Had a had a great time. So guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Metal Gear Rising. Um, this movie, this movie, this game, like captures like such an amazing feel of action um in like the gameplay but then the cutscenes are so good it's got it's got a, like the right amount of humor and like and memes always got to have the memes jack but i just think that this is like it's it's such a fun game it's such a fun story and there's such dumb humor and it's it's perfect it's absolutely perfect i can't wait to play more and to continue next time and i will see you then guys thank you so much